Welcome everyone to the Shake Your Mouth Lounge. I have killed Alex and taken <laughs> taken the podcast back over after a year. <laughs> Has it been a year? Has it been two? I don't remember. It's I feel like it's been a little over a year, but maybe not quite yeah, two. It, it, it's it's between one and one and two. Yeah. Some something like that. So yeah. this is episode 134. Unless I am mistaken, in which case it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I am It'll be episode yeah? 134 in our hearts. Yes. Even if it's not. I'm your host. The ghost. And that's oh. pink. It's pink. So before we, we continue with any, anything else, uh, Ping, do you have anything coming out on your channel? No, I'm... Uh, maybe. I'm working on a Fallout video right now. I, I don't think I'll have it done anytime soon, though, because I'm doing a lot with it. So maybe next week if I'm lucky, but nothing this week. Are you trying to salvage what we did with Howard? <laughs> no, I, I'm actually do doing something different, but it, it's similar to Howard, quite honestly. I have actually tried to remedy that, that stuff, we just didn't go back and continue it. Right. I, I, did, I did grind some, somewhat off, off camera, but that's neither here nor there. But for me, right. I'm stuck in writing hell still, <laughs> so that, no, no, new, no new reviews coming out in the foreseeable f future until freaking Divine Intervention struck, strikes me and I can write again. Right. As for a forums channel, we have three videos coming out this week. The first one on Monday is uh, part four of Sengoku Basara 4 Sumeragi, which W and I did. Then on Tuesday, I believe, is the eighth episode of Fighting Games R, the other podcast that we have running. This one's about Mugen. Oh. It's mostly not about Mugen, because guess what? It's hard to talk about the fighting game engine without talking about other fighting games to compare it to. <laughs> <laughs> and then on Friday we have the second episode of Star Wars Battlefront 2. And that's it. Nice. I only have a little experience with Mugen. I didn't play with it all too much. Uh, most of my experience before this before the Mugen I have right now has just been downloading other people's Mugens, so yeah, it, it sets some expectation expectations that actual licensed games have a hard time getting to, because <laughs> like I the because like the freaking the the Mugen I played most was Mugen Eve, which is short for everything versus everything, and <laughs> uh. you, you can imagine the roster size, yeah. Uh, but yeah. So what have you what have you done this week? What have I done this week? Uh, let's see. I had mentioned in a previous podcast that I whipped out my PS. I was about to say four. That's not the case. PS three to go play through some of my older backlog that I never actually got around to completing. Yeah. So I did a bit of Batman Arkham Asylum this week, and it's fine. It is a game. <laughs> I don't really have much further to say than that. Uh, it's fine. There aren't any glaring problems I'm having with it. I just largely don't feel any need to go back to it. It's like once once I've turned it off and I'm doing something else, I don't really feel like, man, I really want to go play some more Batman Arkham Asylum right now. So. Yeah. It it doesn't seem to be grabbing me, but I'm still gonna try to finish it one of these days. I mean, there there are a couple of design issues with that game that the the sequels didn't didn't fix either. <laughs> like, but past a, past a certain point, the enemies just also stop being fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, although there, there there are a couple couple of design elements that are very nice, like the Mister Freeze boss fight. I figure, forget if that's in Asylum or City. I think it's an asylum. Probably asylum. But yeah, I, I feel like that was nice. I, I'm not sure if it was Asylum or City once again, because those two games blurred together to me. I, I wonder why. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, so it, it's one of one of the first two games, and they had a uh, an enemy type. Well, bas- basically, they have called the en- enemies so that if you take one of them down from a perch, then they start looking at the perches because guess what? It, you're there. Right. So they they tried to actually you know make make fun and adaptive AI. It's just when when you're actually supposed to fight them head on is is when the issues start with their design. I see. So yeah, I I did a little bit of Arkham this week. I am going to start playing Assassin's Creed Three. Ah, I got that for Christmas a several years ago. Never actually got around to playing it because I had also gotten uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Revelations before that. And I did not like Revelations, so I never had any motive to play 3. Uh, but I'm going to start doing that now. Since, so I, mean, uh, I have it in my backlog, so I may as well get to doing it. Yeah, might as well. So a couple, couple yeah. of notes. Revel- you're not liking Revelations. Might not be uh, the bad thing or all things considered. Considering that Revelations was not supposed to be a console game. It was supposed to be for the PSP, I think. They had they. Well, that would explain a lot. They got like I don't know, like half a year or like a year to make it, to make the conversion or for or the whole game. Whole game, I forget. <laughs> no, I think they had one whole year to to make the whole game, so they would have had let, like a couple of months to make the conversion from PSP to actual consoles. Goodness. Yeah, it's in similar in a similar manner. Brotherhood, the 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 freaking the pe- prequel to uh, Revelations. Brotherhood was supposed to be DLC for two, but then it got too big. So that that's how that became oh. a game. Nifty. And for three, uh, do side quests. Not uh, not all of them. Just do the homestead missions. That's where that's where the plot is. That's the main story. <laughs> There's the main story where where you get to go through freaking where 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 you where where you're there for every, every major American development around the time. Right. And then then there's the homestead missions where Connor actually gets a character for, for a small bit. <laughs> Aside from what else can I freaking bring up for three? The parkour has been dumbed down is the best way I can put it. It's a lot like they they tried to make it easier and they tried to make it more responsive, but it's not. It is easier. It's just not more responsive. I found myself accidentally climbing over wall, walls more than with the old system. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a trend in those games by the way. Every I, I every, every I, I time played Assassin's Creed, I noticed. Yeah every every time they tried to make make the make the climbing more e- e- easier and or accessible and all, it just became harder to use. <laughs> like freaking with the, with the newest games, there's just no climbing. I mean, that, that functionally, there's climbing. You can scale walls. It's just it it just doesn't freaking differ from just pressing forward and running. <laughs> is the thing. Well, that sounds handy. I mean, yeah, but one of one of the big one of the design pillars of the. Games originally were parkour and you know climbing shit, so they basically t- stopped doing that altogether. Right. Which, like, I I bring the bring the pillars up a lot in freaking arguments for the old old series or for the old games, but like they, j- I, I'm pretty sure the one of the newer games is Dev Team came out and said, "Oh yeah, that we do have we do have a design bible." We do have these three pillars to make the games on, and then they just they just left out the part where where they say, "Oh, we just don't use that." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, three. We just don't use that. I mean, not anymore. They uh, last year apparently I've just found out about this. Last year, Ubisoft has has formally announced that Assassin's Creed is dead to me, <laughs> and I'm only half joking. Because <laughs> they they have announced that Assassin's Creed from now on is a large scale RPG series, right? And I don't mean that I don't mean that I don't mean I mean that was in oh for the next couple of games because they they sell. No, it's just an RPG series now, and Ubisoft can't do RPG. <laughs> but yeah. 
As for three, to go back to the actual topic, because I'm just ranting again. <laughs> uh, it's it's an all right game. You might you might find some enjoyment in it. Connor Con hope. Connor is a hard character to get into for some. I I for I for one need to play through the game three times to freaking like him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah. Did you do anything else? Alright, um, I think that's all I did on the PS3. On the 4th of July, I watched Independence Day, the film starring Will Smith, for the first time. Is that the one with the aliens? Yes. Alright, then I might, might know some things about it. Right, I had maybe seen a scene or two every now and again over the past... 10 years or whatever. So I had never seen a full movie from start to finish. And I, I have to say right off the bat, that movie did not age well at all. Some of the, some of the graphics and aliens or explosions they've gotten those movies or, or that movie singular. It's just terrible to look at. I mean, when when was it made? To me. When was it made? Like 2000, no 2007. Idea. I'll, I'll look it up. Right I, I have my browser open. I can look it up. All right. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I probably should have added movie. Now that, now that you say oh, it. 1996. My birth year. Yeah, that, that, that explains the, the date at CG, then. Yeah. So, um, funnily enough, even though I've seen a bunch of parts over the years and didn't really see the thing in its entirety until this year, I still can't claim that I was paying 100% attention to it because I was simultaneously playing Civ 6 with my little brother. So, maybe I missed out on some key elements of the film, but honestly, I just can't say that I was a fan it seemed very paint by the numbers and just didn't have anything memorable going on with it. So, I mean, it was a movie. It happened. I probably wouldn't purposely watch it again. But I like Jeff Goldblum, so that was cool. I mean, paint by the number numbers seems to check out with what I, what I've heard from most people who've seen it. So, yeah. But yeah, uh, Independence Day on Independence Day, a bunch of PS3 games. Uh, trying to record some Fallout content, but that that hasn't really gone through yet because I'm I want to do like a sort of mock series where I'm doing like a one life run, but I want to do like I wanted to edit in multiple failures of my attempts. So that's going through the, what what do you call it? That's going through the start of the game multiple times over, and that's going to take a while. So I'm slowly getting footage for that, but it, it's a process. Yeah. So that's, that's all I've been doing this week. All right. As for what I've done, I played through all of the Uncharted games. All right. So... I don't even know where to start. Well, the first game I've actually finished a while ago, but I, I actually finished the second game, and then I was like, well, I, I might as well start on the third, and then finish the third. And then I was like, I might as well start on the fourth, and then I finished the fourth. Yeah. So, though those games exist. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I'm a big fan of Uncharted, but I honestly, even... I, am, I try not to be blinded my, by my fan fandom for it i don't think there's all that much of those games it's a lot of cover shooting and that's it yeah i found because for, for my first playthrough i went through every game aside from the fourth uh, i went through every 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 game on normal or easy and on the fourth i, I saw explore and i was like oh shit was that was that in the under three as well because the, the thing is to me like a normal or easy Normal more so, but yeah, on on normal, normal. 
Uh, most of my experience was being angry because I'm stuck behind the cover and the freaking enemies won't stop chucking grenades. And then on Explorer, the game fulfills its task at being of an action movie simulator. <laughs> like, it's, it's not a challenge, but it's not supposed to be. Nathan Drake is supposed to be this big buff freaking, well, not really buff, but lean, I guess. Right. Like, action right. hero who can't die. Uh-huh. And, like, Explorer, like, I appreciate that there's a challenge, challenge for people who need it, but since I, I look, look at the Uncharted games as just basically action, like mid-2000s action movies anyway, right. being able to play like, play like that as well was more fun. Yeah, I, I definitely agree, because I think I also went on either easy or normal through the Uncharted games, because upping the difficulty... All that really does is give you a lot more buff, tankier enemies. And to me, that's never fun, not in any game. So I enjoy the easier experience of Uncharted because, like you said, to me, it's just a playable action film. So that that's where my enjoyment comes from with it. Yeah, me too. I, I also like, in the first game, the climbing felt like complete ass. It was so janky. Yeah. Like, I, 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 can, I, I can only freaking compare it to, I don't know, like... I don't want to compare it to Prince of Persia, because Prince of Fe- Persia felt better, is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was their first attempt, and by the fourth game, it felt really good. So, I have to give them credit. Because with, e- with, e- with each game, you can see that enhancements were made. Things got better. And then in the third game, they made the enemies throw, like, freaking five grenades a, 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 a second, but... <laughs> <laughs> the fourth game faced that as well. Nice. Overall, I think I enjoyed the fourth game the most, just because. Well, once again, the the enemies don't chuck grenades just because they're not shooting at you at the time. <laughs> <laughs> if if you're like trying to kill everyone from from behind one cover, they they start start uh, throwing grenades. I can't freaking articulate myself for some reason. But yeah, so. When, when, you're, when you're trying to, to shoot everyone from one cover, you will get bombard, bombarded with a couple of grenades, so you'll move. But e- even then, it, uh, like that, that, that's a logical way to use grenades in that context. It's not just, oh, well, I can shoot him from here, I guess, grenade, which is what, what the AI seemed to do in 3. Right. There's also a, a new mecha- new climbing mechanic in four in four that I like. I think they might have used it a bit too much, but I liked it. Liked it. I mostly liked it when I didn't feel like it was too much. Which is the the rope. Have you seen uh, the rope? I have. So yeah, there's a, there's a, a lot of uh, parkour puzzles hang on the rope. No pun intended. But <laughs> so so you know it it does get. Very clear that you know they 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 just they were just like well we need something new so we might as well just put it into every freaking jump, which no that's not how you design <laughs> interesting parkour puzzles but right because you 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 also have to remember I'm looking at this through the eyes of through the eyes of comparing the parkour to Assassin's Creed where the parkour was built around puzzles before it got freaking bastardized. <laughs> And so I'm, I'm sure that does check a lot, lot of things that I like about Assassin's Creed as well, because the climbing is a, a lot of fun. When I can l- just immerse myself in the world and just, you know, look at how they tackle this mythological place or, like, have freaking small artifacts or something, I like those parts. The, shoot, the shootouts were a freaking drag to get, to get through for the first couple games, but the, those... The gunplay got better, better in four at least. I don't remember three or three that much. I remember liking four, four's gunplay a lot better. And then let's see what else I remember. So, uh, well, for the mythological place, I wasn't really sure about fours because, like, you in the first game you have El Dorado, the second you have Chambala. Third one, you have freaking uh, Iram in Iram, the city of pillars, or I forget the Ubar. There's like four names to that place. 
Right. So that, and then in the fourth one, it's it's uh, Libertalia, and I don't like pirates. So <laughs> <laughs> no, the pirates are back. So yeah, it's it. The 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 choice choice of the place wasn't really <laughs> good good for my preferences, but I mean they pulled it off pretty all right. I I liked I liked the setting. <laughs> nice. Like, even even if I disliked the subject matter, I liked how they pulled it off. So I guess that that shows that they did it right. <laughs> and then to compare to all of the, all, all of the Uncharted games. <laughs> Alright, one, one last thing that I had before I move into the other game that I finished this week. Uh, I wish that they actually put like some flavor text next to the artifacts. Like just make up some freaking story as for how they might have used this back, back when people actually lived on in these mythical places or something. Ah, oh. yeah, that'd be cool. Because like, I, I, I felt like the collectibles were just there for collectibles sake and that's a yeah. that's a big 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 reason I or that's a big thing that I raise raise up against Assassin's Creed as well because Unity's map exists. Have you looked at Unity's map, Pink? Have you looked at the I... other one, Have you looked at the amount of freaking collectibles in Unity, Pink? Oh no, I don't know if I have. I I believe there's something like 137 freaking chests in the game. Chests. <laughs> You get money from those, and you don't want to get money from those anymore by the time you're done with, like, half of them. <laughs> you just don't want them to be there. <laughs> they, they went overboard. They really went overboard. <laughs> Sounds like it. But yeah, so... The other game that I, I played, that suffered through, really, but I guess played, <laughs> is Rise of the Tomb Raider. Is that the newest? No, no, that's newest. the middle one. That's the reboot one. That's the sequel to the reboot. Okay. I have played the se- or I have played the reboot as well, and I thought it was the reboot at first too, but then because you know, it Rise of the Tomb Raider, it's it's how it starts. She's rising up to become the big hero. No, uh, technically yes, but no, that's not the start. The start <laughs> is just Tomb Raider. I don't like it one bit. And so, I have always liked Lana Croft better as a character than Nathan Drake, which, which really, really pays me to, which is something that, that, that is really bad to say in, in light of what I'm going to say, but Nathan Drake is a better character than you, Lana Croft, with, with all of the freaking misogyny and being an asshole. Because <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Drake, as much, of, as much of a product of his time he is, he's a protagonist. You look at Nathan, Nathan Drake and you're like, oh well, yeah, he's, he's the story's hero. And he, he acts like it. He, he freaking messes up. And he, he does stupid things. But he's, he's supposed to be a freaking whimsical hero character. Lara mm-hmm. Croft, on the other hand, in my mind anyway, is this badass woman. She, she takes no shits. She's, you know, she just goes into a cave and just shoots a bear for no reason other than it was in the way. <laughs> Right, and like aside from the unable abuse, <laughs> that that's badass. <laughs> and then I look look at reboot Lara Croft, and she's basically like every any time she kills she kills a person in in the cutscene, she basically cries. Aside from the, from the yep. big bad, and. When she's not crying, she, she's like, she's just the unluckiest person alive, which is technically true for Nathan as well, but like Nathan just, me- I don't know, jumps in a place that is not um, secure and he, he just saves himself barely, or he falls down real hard and somehow doesn't die defying death for the 50th time this week. But Laura, Laura doesn't defy that. Laura, <laughs> Laura makes, a, makes an unsafe jump, she falls down, she gets impaled, and then she limps her, her way to a camp. And she does that multiple times in one game. Sometimes. <laughs> right. Like, the new Lara Croft, they're trying to make her more relatable, I guess, but that's not really something... Like, I don't want to relate to an action hero, because... I'll, like, I want to relate to an action hero, but I can't relate to an action hero, because I don't go around blowing freaking shit up and killing people. <laughs> so... Right. <laughs> And when I when I want when I want a freaking treasure adventure, I want an action hero or like 
you know, I have been conditioned to want an action hero because that's what Lara Croft has been. Like that, that's yeah. that, that's one thing that I liked about her. Like just because she's a woman, she's not any different from freaking Indiana Jones or Nathan Drake. She's just a woman. Uh-huh. Like <laughs> she, she's she, she's different in that. Like I don't, I don't, I haven't watched Indiana Jones, so I can compare compare her to him. But like the difference, the big difference between Nathan Drake and and old Lara Croft to me is that old Lara Croft was not insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the third three games, Nathan Drake is sometimes if insufferable. In the fourth game, he get, he gets all of the character development somehow. Like they they, they just kind of remember that. Oh right, four, three games happened. He might he might have changed. <laughs> Whoops! Did those three games actually happen? I guess it's time to make some developments. Yeah, but like Old Lara Croft to me was better, better just because. She she wasn't as 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 holish as Nathan Drake. She she was about about getting the getting shit done, but she wasn't as as holy as holish about it. Right. And you, Lana Croft, she's obsessive, like Nathan Drake, <laughs> but like to, to more to more of an extent. I feel she's obsessive. She's pathetic. She's freaking like she does some cool stuff, but it's all undermined by by everything else she does. And that's not, right. that's not that's not a good thing for an action hero. Uh-huh. Uh, I also felt like a, l- a lot of water was retreaded in this game that that, that, that was treaded in the first game anyway, because a lot of goes, goes through most most of the same freaking points in the story. She doesn't want to kill people. She wants to live a normal life, freaking whatever. And then, oh no, bad people ha- bad, bad people happen, and she learns how to kill to defend herself. <laughs> but the thing is, this is the second ga- game this happened, so you, you'd assume that she she knew how to kill. <laughs> this is the second time she's learned how to kill. Yeah. And then two more sequels came out, and she's still not fully comfortable with it for some reason. I I think what really bothers me about the Tomb Raider reboot is as we've been mentioning it's her basically learning to kill and they they put too much survival aspect into it when they should have focused solely in my opinion on the action hero element yeah it's like i i don't want to play survival game when i'm hunting for treasure i just want to you know just be a badass and go kick ass yeah, that's that's another thing with the gameplay. Like, you have, you you get you get um hit, and you can either wait for you wait for your health to go back up, like it's called, or you can get freaking herbs and berries to heal yourself mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like, the, why is Laura getting like why why is Laura not picking up other people's guns and and instead opting to freaking go through boxes to find parts of guns? And then assemble a gun. <laughs> like there are parts where, where in the story she does pick up other people's guns, but that's a story trigger. And like I'm not against something being story gated because that's, I mean sometimes that's just that, that's just the best thing you can do. But yeah. like if you like if if you want to give give the player more guns than what they have at the time. And don't don't just make the gun be in parts and have have the player put it all together. Then give the player the gun. If you don't want the player to have the gun, then put it in the story. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like there's no good in between to me, because it it's like well yes I could play play the game and unlock the shotgun or I could go and freaking explore the map and get get a different shotgun that that might be better or might be worse. But like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it, I, I guess the design is just not for me. Yeah. Going back to the story for one small bit, I don't know if you remember how people riffed on the story of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I don't remember Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Is that the? Uh... That's Victoria London with the twins. Yeah. But there's this right. one scene that pe- well, there's multiple scenes, but there's, there's this one scene that in specific that I'm talking about that people brought up to point out some flaws in the writing, which is Evie's talking about their father, and Jacob just yells, Father is dead! 
And that's how, that's how I felt about Tomb Raider. That's how I felt about Tomb Raider, because Laura, throughout the whole thing, was like, but father, and I'm just yelling at Laura, father is dead! <laughs> Laura gets knocked out, there's a freaking flashback to father. Laura gets a boo-boo, there's a flashback to father. Laura kills a person, there's a flashback to father. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> there's a whole DLC around father. <laughs> I love it. The DLC was actually better because at least it, it was like nice notes to the series and like callbacks to the original trilogy and shit like that. I liked that one and that, that was DLC that wasn't the whole game. So I could excuse more, more of it. But like the main story genuinely was, I don't, I don't know, like Laura, Laura doesn't trust the, the trans people that, that, that are close to where she is and then she gets knocked out. And while she's knocked out, she's thinking about how she yelled at her father for some reason. There was no, like, to me, there's no real, uh, connection between not, not trusting, trusting the tribes, pe tribes people and Laura yelling at her father. If it, if it was things that were connected and it wasn't just, oh, we're gonna slow feed you the, the twist of the game. <laughs> yeah. Cause that, that's what it, that, that's what what it served as. Uh but yeah, what other things could I bring up about freaking Tomb Raider? There's a there's a lot of a lot of DLC and some uh, like, well, for one, there it has surprise mechanics for your pride and accomplishment. <laughs> but here's the kicker, Pink. Some of the things, like most of the things you get in the surprise mechanics, you can't even use in single player. What? Yes. Is there a multiplayer? Yes, there has been since they, in, in all of the reboot games, but that that's not what matters. Wow. <laughs> I don't understand. It's a it's a shooty mode. Because that's what Tomb Raider needed. Yeah, that, that's what Tomb Raider is about. It's shooty. As, <laughs> especially when Laura falls on her ass and can can't walk, and she just freaking limps to a campsite. That that, that that's the best shooty. Tor is angry right. again. <laughs> Why is Thor angry again? Bloody hell! <laughs> we'll get to you! Ah, <laughs> oh, bloody hell. I might, I might need to go and freaking close the window so Thor doesn't come in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk about something while I go close the window. <laughs> Alright, talk about something. Um, uh, I will talk about my minimal experience with Uncharted. I played through the entirety of the third one. Made it a decent ways through the first one, I think. I still have yet to play the second one. That's actually on my to-do list once I'm finished with something else, either Batman or Assassin's Creed. So I don't want to have too much stuff on my plate at once. But, like I had said previously, I really enjoy the Uncharted series. I don't think 1 is a very good game. There's a lot of problems with it. But I think 3 is a very, was a very solid time. All right, I'm back. Very if nice. if we hear from Thor again, then he'll he's really angry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I one was very freaking uh, flawed. Uncharted one, Uncharted three was uh, Uncharted three's narrative and uh, the CD and all that was really good. The shooting part I didn't didn't like as much because of the aforementioned grenades and the amount of right. them. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> aside from that. I, I I liked it the best before I played 4. And I, I know that I'm, I'm just freaking hanging 4 above your nose because you can't play it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but I, I, I feel like 4, 4 is the one where they got the gameplay down. Not necessarily the story or the freaking... Oh, uh, the characters, but the gameplay definitely. Nice. But yeah, speaking of speaking of freaking stupid amounts of grenades, guess guess what game Tomb Raider Rise of Tomb Raider freaking copied? Uncharted uh, Three. What Sonic Three? What Uncharted Three? Sonic. Uncharted. I'm I Sonic. wish. I don't know where that came from? I wish that freaking Rise of Tomb Raider copied Sonic Three. Is there a Sonic Three? Yes. Hey fuckers. Hey. Hey, what's up? What did I interrupt? We're talking about Rise of Tomb Raider. Rise of Tomb Raider. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, 
that is the second one in the yes movie? yes okay so it, it's the one where she's always in snow yeah it, it, it's in freaking it's in siberia uh okay that that makes more sense yeah so just to just to keep you up, up up to speed i've complained about the narrative because the narrative has been has can be summed up with a freaking clip from Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I shit you not. Okay. So you know that you know you know that clip that people that one of those clips where pe- that, that people use to point out how shitty the writing is in Syndicate, where Evie talks about their father and Jacob yells, yells at her that father is dead. Uh no, I don't. I don't remember people really talking about Syndicate at all, honestly. Oh, whatever. That's the that's one of, one of the clips that I've seen the most used to point out the the writing and, and its flaws. But that's basically the most of the story of Rise of the Tomb Raider. Lara Croft is going well, father, and then the player, or at least I was yelling at her, father is dead, because she uh, wouldn't I freaking see. shut up <laughs> about father. Yeah, my understanding was that those games take their fucking time with the plot because they just want to hang on certain things. It it would have been better if they actually made it made it freaking connect to what's happening because like it, it's like Laura's Laura can uh, it doesn't trust the tribes people in Siberia and then gets knocked out trying to help help them to earn their trust because it's it's kind of mutual like she wants to trust them but doesn't really and they definitely don't trust her so she gets knocked out and we get we get a flashback of Laura yelling at her father I don't see how those two connect. Uh, they don't, but I imagine that the writer wasn't paid that well. Oh, uh, so yeah, and, and, and I've said that. Well, we, we talked we talked about Uncharted as well with Pink, and how in three there's there's a lot of lots of grenades being thrown at you, and as of Tomb Raider copied that part of Uncharted three, it really likes enemies throwing grenades for no reason. Huh. <laughs> Like on, on, on the, the worst parts of Uncharted 3 were copied into Rise of the Tomb Raider, from what I could tell. Huh. And then there's also the freaking the surprise mechanics. What do you mean surprise mechanics? There's loot boxes. Loot box? Does that game have multiplayer? Yes. Oh, okay, because I remember the first Tomb Raider had multiplayer and it was also pretty awkward. And the best part is, most of the shit you get in loot boxes, you can't use, you definitely can't use in freaking in single player, or, or rather, you can't use in the story mode. And I don't think you can use it in the in multiplayer either, because a lot of them is specific to the freaking, I think it's single player horde mode that the game has. Huh. And that's like 90% of the t- things that you can get from the loot boxes. It's just, just um, like modules stat changers for the freaking horde mode and the, horde mo- and the horde mode is not fun because the gunplay isn't particularly fun in tomb raider no i don't imagine so i don't think it was part of the appeal uh you also missed thor he just left i threw him out well he had to go yeah so the question I've got is, one thing I always hear about the Tomb Raider games is that they always go back to the old uh, well of oh, Lara just killed someone for the first time. She feels incredibly guilty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so even though she killed like a shit ton of people in that first game, she again is like, I can't believe I just killed someone. Not to the same extent as in the first game, but yeah. Huh. <laughs> And she's coping better with it, but she's still like, well, I just wanted to nor- wanted a normal freaking life, being a rich woman. <laughs> Blow- blowing up mythical places. That's a normal life, right? <laughs> uh, it, I, I remember in the classic Tomb Raider games, it was like the complete opposite. Lara hated like being a rich fop, and that's why she went out and fucking... Killed dinosaurs and looted Aztec ruins because fuck, I, it's better this than a cocktail party. Yeah, we we talked about this as well. It's like 
I, 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 I like Lara Croft overall better than Nathan Drake, but I look at Nathan Drake and I look at the new Lara Croft and I like Nathan Drake better because <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll take, I'll take generic freaking action hero dude who can, who, ha, who can, who freaking defies death every, every five seconds over pathetic, like, I guess, relatable woman who's just there because. <laughs> Well, it's one thing that always bugged me about that first Tomb Raider game is that they were going and saying like, hey, Lara Croft, iconic female badass action hero of video games, like the, the contends with Samus for the title of like first woman of gaming, right? Yeah. And the, de- the developer, when talking about the game, said, I want the player to feel like he has to protect Lara. And I was just like, wait, what? I don't know. I don't playing through Tomb Raider. I didn't feel like it, that I, I wanted to protect her. I feel, felt like I wanted 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 Nathan Drake to get another game because bloody hell, <laughs> shit, <laughs> shit. Give give Nathan's daughter a game. She'll be a better protagonist than you, Lara. At this point, aren't all of Nathan's family members badasses? We we, we don't know about the daughter for sure. I don't think, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, Nathan, Nathan's wife is a bigger badass than he is. Huh. <laughs> Is his daughter like just a baby? No, she's like twelve or thirteen. But they okay. in the fourth <laughs> in the in the fourth game they they leave it with like her finding out about Nathan and Elena going going on big adventures, and then that that's how the game ends. So there there might be sequels with the daughter, and I mean if they if they if he give her a good character, if they make her a good action hero, I like her because that that's all I want out of out, out of Uncharted. <laughs> all right. I was kind of hoping that you'd say she's going to be a baby and there's the forest babies doing Blanca balls all over the place. <laughs> that that would have yes. been funny. The game we all need. Sadly, sadly, no. For some reason, on Jordan 4, or like really Nathan, Nathan Drake's story overall ends with, ends with Nathan Drake living in like this freaking uh, vacation resort. He's, he's running like a fishing, uh, fishing place. You know, I like that. I mean, there's always the classic of the hero story ends with him dying, and there are some stories where that fits better, but I feel like it's done too much right now, you know? Yeah. So getting Nathan to retire and said, I think, is a little... It's it's a little different, and I think it works for Nathan, you know? I mean, I don't mind the retiring. I just felt, felt like going on the on the sea didn't fit him as, as well. Like, avi- aviation, maybe. <laughs> It's he's just being, he's being gotta a, be so he's gotta be somewhere near not land. Yeah. Like I, I don't know, like just just any 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 type of adventurer or like you know the closest thing we can we can get to that you know, normal job would have would have fit him better than just being a fisherman to me. Yeah. I think if they did the sea route as a homage to his namesake more than anything else. Yeah, they oh, might have. Alright. And then let's see what else. Uh, I played Sumeragi alone. <laughs> I yeah. I tried out tried the quad weapon rusty uh, the, the quad damage rusty weapon heaven difficulty uh, level one challenge, which needs a better name. <laughs> and it's doable. It's not easy, but it's doable. <laughs> So basically, uh, I'm not sure if it's doable in multiplayer. That 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 remains to be seen. But in single player, it is it is somewhat doable because you can abuse um the mega buster attacks when you have to have them, and you just have to get lucky. And that's basically it. Okay. Anything hmm. else? Let's see. I did start lead, reading Bleach. The manga, because I actually want to f- want, want it to finish sometime, and the anime okay. is like, and, and the anime is not going to. They they have canned it because the freaking manga took so long. <laughs> oh, they did! I didn't know that. Yeah, Bleach has been dead for years. They they I've, I'm pretty sure it's been offi- officially said. Although I I can't freaking post sources, so who knows. I thought, it was one of the, uh, I thought it was one of the four immortal series alongside One Piece, Naruto, and uh, which, yes, I know Naruto's over, but fucking Boruto isn't. And Dragon Ball. I mean, Boruto is non canon at this point. 
I mean, it basically, basically is known canon. The freaking it isn't the original guy coming up with it. <laughs> just, huh. one of, just one of his, one of his apprentices. Ha! Huh. So like, technically, it's canon, but not really because it's not the same guy. I guess it, the, the fans choose. <laughs> but yeah, Bleach, I believe, ended or is supposed to end. I, I, I'm not too sure about that, but I, I believe the Bleach manga ended and actually the, the writer dude wanted to quit it like five years before it ended. But, yeah. uh, but the Shonen Jump was insistent on Bleach not dying for some reason. I wonder why. <laughs> and it, it basically, as a protest, it took so long to come out with the next part that the anime got cancelled. <laughs> nice. And so yeah, I started reading that and it, it did make me, it, it did remind me why I started liking Bleach initially. And then I remembered that there's the freaking the Wook Viora part. <laughs> and I'm not looking forward to, re- to reaching that again. Because there's. I'm, yeah? I have no idea what you're talking about. So the, the, the series starts off as this sort of slice of life shonen hybrid where they're, they're trying to live a sort of normal life while also trying to teach Ichigo about. You know, being a good, good Shinigami and all that. But yeah. then, but then, uh, I don't remember when it, when it, when it is in the freaking series exactly. But like, it, it was some, some like three hundred episodes in that Orihime is kidnapped and taken to like freaking Spanish desert <laughs> or something. I don't remember <laughs> exactly. But uh. She's taken to this like de- desert dimension with all of, all of the hollow, the bad people, and Ichigo goes out. Or well, the whole team actually goes after her, and then they just linger for years. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that that not only was the freaking the show canned in in Hungarian broadcast, but the whole channel got canned before they finished that arc. Huh. So let's tell you about the length of it, if they've reached the, like three hundred something some episode by that point. And yeah, it, it, the new characters they introduced weren't really weren't really interesting. The new new um, non evil characters, evil characters existed. Ichigo died like five times just then, like genuinely died and had to had to be brought back, or something. I don't remember. Anime. Yeah. So yeah, we will see, we'll see if I even reach that part, that part again. Also, the freaking translation of the manga I'm, re- I'm reading is annoying because it it it's not it it doesn't freaking it, it doesn't t- translate the word for soul, but it does tra- does translate the word for word for uh, brother, which is aniki, which could have more nuanced meaning depending on the context. Huh. Because the thing with Aniki is that technically, yes, it, it just, ju- does just mean older brother. But because Mafioso took to, took to using it, it could also just mean somebody with, with higher social standing. So, I, I don't remember if, if that was the case in the, in the place where they translated it, but still. Yeah. And I think that's all I've done. All right, and I assume Pink's already said what he's done? Yeah. All right, it's just me then. All right, so over on my end, it's been a pretty be- busy, busy week. Yes, yeah, a busy week. Very it became busy a bee. Week. Oh, I've been busy as a bee. <clears throat> now, P- Pink, 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 was just so thoroughly, Pink was so thoroughly disappointed with that. He just fucking got up and left. He was sick of my <laughs> shit. I am having trouble thinking of what I've done outside of recording. I really all that springs to mind is that uh, was the 4th of July this week? It was last Saturday. Right. So here. Right after we stopped recording the last episode, uh, I went down and with my parents, uh, we watched for the first time Alien and Aliens. You watched what? Alien and Aliens. They're two separate films. Uh, Yes, the 
famous Sigourney Weaver killing a shitload of aliens movies, right? Right. Now, the first alien movie, Alien, just one. That's just one alien. And I know it probably seems really silly on the outside that the sequel, all they did was throw an S on the end, but it is actually really important. Because it proved the that there were more. Yes. <laughs> Among other things. The first movie, Alien, there is only one alien, and it is on a ship with seven or eight other people who are trapped on the ship with it. And the really key thing is that, for one thing, it's pretty much space truckers. So they, they're not armed. And even if they were, since they're on a spaceship, if at any point anything breaks the outside hole of the spaceship, oh, congrats, everyone dies. Welcome to that space. <laughs> yeah, Dead Space took a lot from that idea. I mean, did the, it, I mean, the Xenomorph, Necromorph, I wonder. Oh, yeah. But but I, I, I was talking to Mike about Dead Space just the other day saying he'd love it because Dead Space is pretty much a combination of Alien and The Thing, you know? Yeah. And it, what really makes it bad is the Xenomorph, the Alien, its blood is acid. Really oh, corrosive. No. Yeah, really corrosive acid. So if they do wound it with a, like a knife or something, then the blood will melt through the ship's hull. So they pretty much can do nothing to the alien without killing themselves in the process. And remember, and, and remember, being in Mortal Kombat, people drink the alien's blood. Yes. Oh the, no. I yes, in Mortal Kombat X, they added the alien as a guest fighter, but they did not change anything for his acid blood. So there are several characters for whom they have fatalities, where they either eat their opponent or drink their opponent's blood. Which makes no sense against the alien, because the alien has highly acidic blood. <laughs> it is still, to me, my favorite... Uh, one of my favorite fatality to th imagine that with is... Kotal Khan has one where, because he's an Aztec, he rips out his opponent's heart. Raises it above his face and squishes the uh, heart. And, like, lets the blood shower down on his face. And I just like I just wish they implemented a special version of that animation where he does it to the alien, and he smashes the heart over his face, and it melts the skin off his skull, and then he just drops dead. Uh, and then, anyways, it's, and then yeah. it says friendship. But go ahead. <laughs> no, it, it, it would have to say horror har cutie. Oh fuck! What a weird feature for Deception to go with. Anyways, so it. A the first Alien, very slow-paced horror. The entire first third of the... Like, the entire first third of the movie, the Alien just isn't there. It's just space trucking. Which, I mean, setup is nice, but there's such a thing as too much setup, you know? Yeah, I can agree with that. H.R. Geiger did a lot of the, the visual design work, especially for the... Uh, isn't he Geiger? Mike would eat your, eat your freaking heart for that. Uh, no, I would have called him H.R. Geiger yesterday, and he didn't correct me there, but I, you're right, he did call him Giger, so I guess it's H.R. Giger, 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 it's German, so I guess it's Giger, but H.R. Giger, uh, H.R. Miguel, <laughs> yes, he definitely, <laughs> he definitely designed the Xenomorph, and you can tell it's him because the Xenomorph's design is super fucking phallic, that is H.R. Giger's thing. He also did the work of designing the derelict spaceship that they find the alien in, and what is by far my favorite part of the whole movie is uh, them walking into an alien spaceship and being like, oh, intelligent aliens that know how to fly spaceships, cool, we'll finally meet aliens. And they get in there, they're all fucking dead. I love starting off a horror movie like that. Because it's just like, oh, these tremendously powerful aliens, much more powerful than us, Dead. All of them dead. What the fuck could have killed these guys, right? Yeah. That, that's that to me, that's the right way to start a horror movie off. And then of course they wind up stumbling upon an alien egg, and then John Hurt, bless his soul, he gets face fucked. That sounds the, uncomfortable. It, yeah, it looked pretty uncomfortable, honestly. <laughs> the cast is pretty stacked. We got Sigourney Weaver. 
We got Tom Skerritt, who has not done really any work since Alien, but hey, he's pretty good here. John Hurt, who is an all-time great. Harry Dean Stanton, who has pretty much been a side role in every movie ever. We got Ian Holm, who just unfortunately passed away a, a couple weeks ago. And you guys would probably know him as Bilbo in Lord of the Rings. Ah, uh, oh. Uh, Yafet Koto, an actor who has done a variety of respected roles. And I believe that into the cast, yes. Except, of course, for the guy in the alien suit, the poor bastard. <laughs> the in as the no, go ahead, Peng. That, that was me, but I was just going to make a stupid joke. Oh, okay. Uh, go ahead then. Let's hear it. <laughs> in, in, in the freaking in, in the alien costume was three three PO all along. Oh no! <laughs> in, in in the in the three PO costume as well. He had two costumes on, the dude. <laughs> Hey, now, I, I might be more interested in the sequel trilogy if at one point, like, uh, Chestburster comes out of C-3PO. <laughs> and he just looks down, he's like, oh, this is quite a problem. He just, no, he just, he just he takes out the freaking uh, uh, face hugger from his back pocket and puts it on the ground. It, 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 <laughs> it craw craw crawls on a clo clone's face. Everyone dies. You're pretty much describing a character from Aliens, honestly. Like, yeah, the, it, it's it's one of those series where inevitably if someone's uh, being a bit of a douchebag, they're like, hey, guess who had an alien face fucker with them? Uh, anyways, like, the first alien, the monster's biology is fascinating, the little life cycle we get to see, and it's fucking creepy as fuck. It's set up as a very strong horror villain. The fact that if you wound it, it still wounds you. Is pretty fucking creepy. The entirety of the spaceship is foreboding and creepy as hell. And it's working off of 70s idea of the sci-fi future. So all the computer monitors are CRT. And they all work off of just DOS. No actual operating systems, just DOS. <laughs> Which I think really adds to the setting in a way. Because like we made Windows and all that. And we, when we made Windows and all that, it was partly trying to make computers more warm and accepting and user-friendly, right? Yeah. Right. So it, I think it's really nice to have a sci-fi horror setting where computers are still DOS, because DOS is kind of cold and foreign and alien and, like, robotic, you know? I don't know. I, I feel like the operating system used in freaking Jurassic, Jurassic Park is, a, is, is more cold and alien than DOS. Because those, 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 you look at DOS, and it, it's just DOS. You look at that shit, I forget its name, but it's actually, it's, an, it's, an, it's a real operating system, by the way. Well, I, I think everyone, what everyone remembers with Jurassic Park's computers is, you didn't say the magic word. I didn't watch the movie, I just, <laughs> I just saw the OS in it. Ah. It, 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 was in, it was interesting, so I looked it up. But that, that's a real operating system, and it was used for, like, freaking contemporary CGI machines, so it might have been used on that movie, and that's why it's in the movie. Ha! That works out. Yeah. Oh, but, man. But, like, that, that, shit, that shit had a 3D maze for files, so I can't think of many, many, many things more, more freaking alien than that. that. That's very strange, yes. What the hell? So... Alien is a pretty good, long, uh, intense, very tension-based horror film. I would say that it's one really flaw that strikes me is that it goes too slow at certain points. And it has too much setup. But when the ball starts really rolling, it starts fucking really rolling, if you know what I mean. I don't know. I, I like the amount of setup just because when I, I first saw... Like the first half of the movie, I might have seen the whole movie. I don't remember, honestly. It's been so long. But but when I first saw the movie, it was when I was like five or seven, and I, it was just my well, dad's watching some movies, so I guess I'll watch it too. And it 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 was before, like just before the alien or the xenomorph get gets on board. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the ship the ship alone is creepy as fuck. 
I don't know. I didn't find it too. I honestly didn't find the movie too creepy. But then I, I guess I just I'm just not too scared of space. Yeah. I have I have this problem where I like like I'm, I'm simultaneously afraid of the of the unknown, but when I know it's unknown, I'm I've just stopped being scared. <laughs> I mean, space is just <laughs> space is just emptiness. But like, what I mean is like the ship is so big. The ship is way too big to be crewed by seven people, right? Yeah. The ship is fucking massive. And it's just long, dark corridors and cold, unforgiving steel for so much of it. Especially when they go into the engineering department. Because the engineering department just straight up looks like a Silent Hill area with like rusty chains and leaking and all kinds of shit. Ah. But, you know, the first Alien's pretty good. Aliens? Yeah, the S is there because guess what? Now yeah, there's more than one now. Oh no! Oh boy! I've also heard that that's not, not as good as the first one. It's a common debate because Alien is a horror movie. Aliens is an action movie with horror elements. That's that. That's weird to think about because the first one I heard it from was my father, who likes freaking uh, Fast and the Furious because they're action movies, and likes the freaking uh, Michael Bay Transformers movies because of the CGI. So, so, I, I, so I, I don't, I don't know why he, he wouldn't like like Aliens for being an action movie. I don't know either. I, I, how does he feel about Terminator Two? I don't remember. Because <laughs> Aliens is a lot closer to Terminator Two or Mad Max Fury Road, like in terms of how it goes to me. I don't think he's seen Fury Road. He 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 does like Mad Max, Mad Max though. I I'm pretty sure he he's seen the first three, ter- three Terminators and he likes all of them. Huh. All right. I'm well. He just said that he thinks Alien is better than Aliens, and for, yeah. If he's a fan of like tense horror, then I can absolutely see why. No, that my mom is the horror buff in the household, ah. so that's it, it's weird. Ha. Huh. All right. Now, Aliens pretty much goes an entirely different direction. The alien is by all means still threatening. But this time it's about a squad of marines being sent into a planet that has been face fucked by the aliens. And so understandably that means that you're probably going to see more than a few aliens bite it. Now, granted, the mission does not go well at first as it should. And when I say the mission is at first a disaster for the Marines, boy, is it a fucking disaster. How much of the ninja rule is in place? Oh, the ninja rule is in place hard, man. I see. We start off with 12 Marines, and then, like, out of those 12, fucking uh, eight of them die in under, like, a minute. All together. Ah. Uh-huh. But then each of the four surviving Marines takes a fucking, like, at least a crowd of 30 fucking aliens to kill, you know? Yeah. It's the dead souls. Yeah? <laughs> they gave their power. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I like the idea of, like, them getting initially slaughtered because they don't know what the fuck they're dealing with. But, like, once they figure out what they're dealing with, they can do a lot more, you know? Yeah. Which, I mean, that is the way they present the aliens, is, like, they're hell to fight at first because they're crawling on the ceilings, they're crawling on the walls, they're fucking everywhere. You're in their den. They bleed acid. These are not the kinds of things that Marines are ordinarily used to fighting. Honestly, I feel like I would find the Xenomorphs a lot, lot scarier if they, they had more legs. Like, if, if they were more spider-like than, than humanoid. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a couple more legs on them, then then we got actual fear. Yeah, like the, th- like like just just make the make the the freaking alien queen as, as like not not as big or like I don't I don't know like don't give the alien queen a, a separate freaking torso. The torso is also where the legs are. <laughs> At some point, giving that a shot because I believe the alien adapts depending on which species it face fucks. Ah. Uh. I know at some point there was a dog alien, and there was definitely a predator alien at some point. I mean, we, 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 don't, we don't talk about Alien vs. Predator. No, we don't. It's the only movie out of either series that I remember, but if we don't talk about it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, when I was talking to Mike, and I was like, oh, I, I consider myself kind of a big fan of Alien vs. Predator franchise, despite not having seen the movies. And he was like, don't see the movies. The, the Capcom video game was good. The movie was freaking weird. The, the, the biggest, weirdest thing that I, that, I've, that I still remember is the, the, it ends with uh, this woman kills an alien. She's the only survivor. And all of the Predators show up. And then she gets one of the hunters as um like folding uh staffs because she's a big big great warrior, but the, the predators hunt people. No, the predators absolutely do that. Like if the predators think someone is a big enough badass, then they totally will be like, "Hey, you're cool. Take this weapon." Oh, uh, okay. And uh, the Batman versus Predator comic, which I doubt either of you guys read, because why would you? <laughs> But uh, Batman, of course, gets attacked by a Predator while he's in the Batcave. And Alfred shoots the Predator in the back with a shotgun. And then another Predator comes down and is like, Hey, Alfred, you're a cool guy. Here's a sword. <laughs> and, then yeah. and then Alfred takes a Superman pill and gives the shit out of the Predator. <laughs> predator. <laughs> I've killed one of you. I've tasted Predator blood. I, I really just want more, more badass Alfred. <laughs> Beating people up with his fists, even though he's 80. <laughs> oh, man. And I, I want to say later Batman comics, you can actually, if you pay attention, you'll see in the background where Alfred's got that sword on display somewhere. <laughs> implying that it's canon. Oh, fuck. No, most, most of those freaking crossovers are canon. <laughs> yeah, I... I it, haven't several of them actually started weird character development bits? Like, Pink, didn't Justice League versus Avengers start up a very big character development thing for Vision, of all people? Mm-hmm. Man, that's weird. Hey, how, how can this Logan Stark, or whatever his name was, the, the mix of Batman and Iron Man, or not the Batman, freaking Wolverine and Iron Man, I'm mixing shit up. Was it Batman and Wolverine? <laughs> Batman and Wolverine, Logan Wayne. Yeah, that, that was the one. I got that eventually. <laughs> I think, Iron, I think Iron Man got mixed with the Green Lantern. Yep. Ah, so that's Which, where that skin comes from, I see. As much as, as silly as I think those are, I have to admit that one of my favorite things to come out of the amalgam was combining Joker and Sabretooth for the hyena. That one was a pretty mm. cool idea. Was Martian Man Hunter basically with anyone, or was he, was he just not a big enough name? I don't know. I don't think so. They only, I certainly don't remember. They only did a couple of them, and I have to imagine, like, they didn't do Aquaman and Namor, because, oh, it's Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, to get back to Aliens, yeah, Aliens is a much more action-heavy movie. We see the heroes kill aliens in droves. It's not that the alien is not a threat anymore, it's just that the alien has now been put in an environment where there's less going for him. The the uh, the deck is less stacked in his favor in this movie, right? Yeah. And it's more so known for, like, a lot of its badass action scenes. And it's one of those odd things where people, like, build up the Marines as, like, oh, the ultimate badasses, the Marines from Aliens. Never mind the fact that the movie pretty well starts off with ten of them getting fucking slaughtered. And out of the surviving four, one of whom is like a famously huge coward <laughs> and another one's a famously huge idiot. So really only two of the Marines are that badass. But like I walked away from it really enjoying it. It was definitely a bit of a popcorn flick, but it had a serious uh, uh, and a really enjoyable story with some really memorable characters and it had a very big theme running throughout which is the theme of motherhood, which was rather surprising. What, I think one of the greatest mistakes in that movie, though, is I've heard before that the extended cut is the best version, the director's cut. And that's for a very big reason. It's the start of the movie. They explain that Sigourney Weaver's character, Ellen Ripley, has been uh, cryogenically frozen between alien and aliens, right? Yeah. <clears throat> well, they explain to her, well, you've been frozen for 70 years. In the meantime, your daughter back on Earth has grown up, and now she's an 80-year-old woman. 
And they show her a picture of Sigourney Weaver's real life mother, by the way, which I find hilarious. A- and Sigourney Weaver has to act like her mother is her daughter, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's actually this really sad scene because Ellen Ripley has to be like, oh, I missed my daughter's entire childhood and adulthood, and now she's older than I am. And it's like really tragic and shit, right? Right. And it's setting up the one of the main character things for Ripley is when they get down to the planet, she finds the one human survivor, which is a little girl who's been hiding in the vents, which very much builds up on the motherhood thing there because it's pretty much a fill-in daughter, right? Yeah. Right. And the final conflict of the movie is rather famously with the alien queen. And I thought it was like the best scene in the movie is when Ripley walks into a patch full of alien eggs with a flamethrower and she looks just about like she's ready to roast all the eggs, right? And just kill all the alien babies. And she looks up and she sees the alien queen and the alien queen actually backs down and kind of like with dog motions, like dog gestures, like just kind of in the way that an alien would, which is to say an alien can't speak, but it tries to gesture. It's like, Please just leave without killing anybody. Like, we don't have... Like, it was. A, it's an odd, bizarre, empathetic moment between horrible monster and human of, like, we're both mothers, You, but we both understand that you shouldn't do this. This is horrible, right? Right. And Ripley's like, you know what? I get it. I actually get it. I'm going to walk out without killing any of your babies. And then she, put, and, then she puts the entire place to a flame. Well, yeah. <laughs> One of the eggs cracks open, and then Ripley is honestly like, hey, wait a second, what the fuck am I doing? And then she roasts all the eggs. <laughs> Wait, which I like that it, it, they have that little moment of respect between the characters, but then also like the realization of, oh, wait, this is a horrible monster who kills a ton of people. I should kill all these babies. Yeah. And kind of, of course... Responsibility there. Yeah. <laughs> And the alien, the alien queen, of course, like flips her shit, yeah, and did. that sets up the in the final boss fight for that movie. The alien sure queen. Go- Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Addy. All right, the, the alien queen queen sues, sues her in inter- international law for breaking the Geneva Convention. They couldn't fit the queen through the court door, honestly. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> And yeah, that entire final act I felt was uh, very fun, very good. Like, Aliens is a movie that kind of walked away like the only serious flaw to me was the cut scene at the beginning that sets up the entire conflict of motherhood. But other than that, like, that's a really fantastic movie. I don't think I walked away from it thinking it was as good as Terminator 2. Terminator 2 was my main comparison because it was, they were both directed by James Cameron, who I, I know I've vocalized before how much I despise him for Avatar, but at the end of the day, he did make two good movies. Or three, he made Terminator 1 as well. But James Cameron, twice in his career, took a horror franchise and then made an action sequel, and it was very highly praised and generally considered to be very good. Twice in one career, huh? Incredible. So I went in expecting Terminator 2 and Aliens to be very similar. They were in little ways, though... Aliens retains more of the horror than Terminator 2 does, I would say. Though I guess the T-1000 is a lot scarier for first-time viewers. Yeah, that, that, that probably makes sense. But anyways, there are long similar lines. I consider Terminator 2 the superior of the two, but Aliens is still a very good movie. If you like Terminator 2, I'd recommend someone to watch Aliens. And as a matter of fact, like for what I know about Pink, Pank, I know you're not big on horror because you find it, the story is very unfulfilling, correct? Right. So for you, I don't think you, I don't know that you'd really enjoy Alien. I mean, Alien's got a good, very good story for a horror flick, but I think you would probably walk away really enjoying Aliens. It seems like it hits kind of the story notes you'd want, and it's got characters right. that you'd really enjoy. Right. There, I think there's one character in particular you'd really thoroughly enjoy. <laughs> one thing I gotta say, looking at the cast of those movies made me a bit sad. 
Because watching the first Alien, it's, oh, John Hurt. I love John Hurt. John Hurt passed away a couple of years ago. Harry Dean Stanton. I love Harry Dean Stanton. Harry Dean Stanton passed away a couple of years ago. Ian Holm. I love Ian Holm. He passed away a couple of weeks ago. And then watching Aliens, again, it's, oh, Bill Paxton. I love Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton died tragically, you know, four years ago. Mm-hmm. Ooh. If, imagine, imagine if uh, time, time goes on, more, more people are just added, added to the freaking credit scene. David Bowie, what's he doing here? He wasn't even in the film. <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, wait a second. When was Robin Williams in this movie? Robin Williams played one of the aliens. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's actually a little bit that I love. Uh, from the first Alien movie, there is a scene they had to cut. Because there's a scene where the alien creeps up behind a character, but then when she's about to notice him, he crab walks out. And, and they had to cut the scene because it looked so damn stupid. But the idea of the alien fucking crab walking out of a room when it gets noticed is too funny to me. <laughs> oh, man. That's pretty much the extent of what I've done this week. Outside of recording a shit ton of Dead Rising with Mike, which will be going up on my channel and his pretty soon. And boy, that's a long series of sessions of me talking about me and him talking about whatever the fuck, which is nice because he got to I got to do the pro elite plays my dead rising skills. No, no equal. And I don't have to talk during the parts where I'm focusing on the game because, hey, it's Mike. You can always trust Mike to be able to talk about anything. Right. Right. And that was very nice. And we were, we were like, oh, we'll record an epilogue where I'm running around the mall, right? And we'll just talk about the game. And we'll just have our final opinions on the game. And then two and a half hours later of talking about Love, Life, and M. Night Shyamalan, we had talked about very little Dead Rising. <laughs> so if you want a podcast with me playing Dead Rising in the background, wait for Dead Rising Epilogue and Dead Rising Epilogue Part 2 to come out. I love it. Oh, man. One thing, I, I just want to say one last thing, because it's both about Alien and it's something I talked with Mike about. But after watching those two movies, I was interested to read about that Alien Isolation video game that came out a couple of years back, right? Yeah. Right. So it was touted for the Xenomorph having very, very intelligent AI. It correct? hears you. It hears you. Yes, it can hear you. If you sneeze into your microphone, it will hear you and come for your ass. Which yeah, is uh, I planned for us to do it for this Halloween, but uh, my Game Pass ran out. Because I, I, was, I was planning on, without y'all, y'all knowing, I was planning on put it, putting in the freaking Xbox mic into my Xbox controller and just yelling into it every couple of minutes so we'd get found. <laughs> oh man, I should pick the game up on sale so we can do that. That would be such an awkward one because there would be anytime the Xenomorphs around, I'd have to shut the fuck up and you guys would have to carry it. Yeah, that, that's why. I, that, that's why I wanted to do it on, on the Xbox because I can, I my mic can be muted. So I can, if, when I when I want to add more tension, I can just yell into the mic, and when I just want to do TS because I can mute it and it won't hear me. Yeah, it's it's a nice on off switch. <laughs> so did you guys hear the further extent of what people found out about that AI? Possibly, but what? I've heard nothing. So it's a bit like the cannibals in the forest, where its AI depends on its your past behavior towards it. If you repeatedly throughout the game alert it to your presence, but then elude cap its capture, like repeatedly you manage to successfully escape it, it starts to get pissed specifically at you and will start ignoring other things to directly go for you, even if the other NPCs are fucking with it. <laughs> If you use too many noisemakers, if you do too many of the Far Cry rocks, right? Yeah. If you, if you do that too much, the alien will stop going to where you throw the rock and instead look at the rock and be like, all right, she threw it from this direction and then go for you that way. Oh, no. And the scariest fucking thing of all, there's a flamethrower you can pick up and that is the only weapon in the entire game that will scare the alien off, right? Yeah. If you use it too much, the alien will learn its maximum range and specifically stay out of the flamethrower's maximum range, but shadow you the whole way and still just walk along with you just outside of its range, it, waiting for you to... 
It's doing, it's doing footsies. It's, yes, it, it shimmies. Yes, it shimmies you until you either put the flamethrower away or turn around, at which point it pounces on you. And that's, that freaked Mike's shit when I explained that. Because like in Mike's own words, there are certain things that you come to expect in life. The sun comes up in the morning and the moon comes up in the night. And you expect, oh, AIs and video games don't understand the maximum ranges on weapons. And it freaks it freaked him out that the alien could learn the maximum range on the flamethrower and exploit it. <laughs> I mean, hon honestly, honestly, if if we could freaking take that AI and put it into fighting games, I'd I'd be satisfied. <laughs> oh man, could you imagine if the AI was smart enough to bait out your heavies and then counter? I mean, you you just be forced to learn. Just make make it like the freaking the hardest difficulty. Yeah, the AI, they, you have normal AI for the lower difficulties, and then you, yeah, you have realistic. And then they just, it just simulates a freaking three-bar connection with, with the freaking AI being Daigo. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, even, if, even if the game doesn't have two-edged psych parries, now it does. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so that's what I've done this week. All right. So I, I actually have a topic I wanted to bring up, but I forgot about <laughs> the start of the podcast. Sweet. And I'll probably keep it short. Because it is time for Eddie's annual Assassin's Creed rant. No, <laughs> oh kind, kind, kind of, but not really. I am actually not that pissed about the Assassin's Creed Valhalla, because as I brought it up on this podcast before, but you weren't here for it, W. Uh, Ubisoft yeah, apparently last year announced that Assassin's Creed is dead to me. Officially really? announced. Yeah. <laughs> Because Ubisoft, Ubisoft came out and announced officially that uh, Assassin's Creed is now just full on an RPG series. They will not, they will not even consider freaking going back to action adventure games. So for the next couple, next couple of freaking centuries, that's that's probably gonna be true. Even if the fail, if the fails falter, if the sales falter a bit. <laughs> but yeah, so Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, the game leaked. Multiple recordings of the game leaked. And okay. I personally didn't see the leaks because they came out when I was sleeping and by the time I freaking woke up, it was taken down by Ubisoft, which means that they were real. <laughs> Ooh. And so, basically, just judging by what other people said, because there were some nice people who actually summarized what happened in the, in the videos for those, those who couldn't watch it. Uh, basically, it's it it's just continuing the trend. It's it's Odyssey, but more. No no faults are are fixed at least according to whatever build uh like old ish build footage we got. No no issues are fixed. It's just gonna have a new AI or a new UI, and it's gonna be in England this time or like I don't know which area, but yeah. Also like <laughs> uh Ashraf. Back when he was still working on the game, which is a funny thing to say, considering that was true like two months ago. But <laughs> Ashraf promised that we would have a um, uh, uh, a more like realistic take again. We we would go back to being more historically historically accurate. Yeah, he lied. Just straight up, straight up lied. There's wizards in the wild. <laughs> of course there are. Why would there not be? Yeah, because that the, the fuck. There's a genuine freaking like quote of him where he went or like I don't know actually actually know if it was Ashraf, but it was like a dev commented that oh well we wanted to make because most people go with the mythical route with, with Vikings, we wanted to make a a realistic and true to nature uh, freaking take take on the Dark Ages England. And then you have wizards. <laughs> Yay. And they explain this all away. Not even with the freaking beast, the Apple of Eden, which using the Apple of Eden was uh, the world's biggest cop out. But, but that's lore specific to this case, this series, so whatever. No, uh, remember how a couple of years ago, you, all of you, all Ubisoft games had a um, had a freaking fantasy segment that was explained away by drugs. Yeah, that's that's this whole game. <laughs> oh, but this time it's Berserker Rage. Yes. So that, 
uh, the the fighting the fighting looks more more mostly the same. They promise that they will try to freaking slow some of the animations down so it doesn't feel as shit. The uh, whole the whole system feel, feels shit. So <laughs> they just didn't really copy copy souls well. If they want to copy if they want to copy souls, at least do it good. Make it freaking enjoyable and make make it work like souls. So it, I don't have to freaking like the thing with souls is there's stats in souls and stats can make a big difference. But I'm I'm not looking at the freaking helmet I picked up and looking at the at what stat it boosts, really. No, not really. In Souls, you tend to pick outfits more based off looks. <laughs> yeah, in, in Assassin's Creed, unless unless you have a whole like unless everything points to assassination, like just partly or something, you you can't really assassinate people. Meh. So yeah, I have to be wearing the right helmet to stab you. Yes, genuinely. I think what's your take on that? I have no idea. Good. Like in, in, <laughs> in another C, instead of fixing this issue with their design, instead of doing that, they just added more freaking loadout slots so you can have multiple loadouts. One for fighting, one one for assassination, one for shooting. <laughs> I wish I was joking. <laughs> but I'm not. So that oh, there's also uh, some boss fight uh, stuff came out, and apparently that doesn't look too good either. It looks better than the free roam stuff that we saw, but it do- doesn't look much better, apparently. One good thing that I can say is that apparently they, they might be trying to make choices actually matter some, because we got two, um, two recordings of the same mission, and in one recording, the one character is alive. And in the other recording, he's dead, and it's in the objective that he's dead. So, huh. and he he's also an ally. So unless unless your objective is to kill your ally, then huh. it, it it might ad- it might adapt to some things better than other did. But honestly, like the thing with these Assassin's Creed RPG games is that well, for one, they're largely not Assassin's Creed, and if I it, then anything that they do is usually done better by the things they're copying. <laughs> so. Because like why 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 do I why would I want to play at a shitty attempt at an immersive world and joy uh, choices and shit like that when I can play The Witcher Three and as, as much as it pays me to freaking uh, not criticize The Witcher Three to actually freaking praise it like The Witcher Three compared to the new Assassin's Creed is Jesus <laughs> yeah like that's bad yeah because The Witcher Three has a shit ton of freaking faults it's heavily overrated it's I'd say it's mediocre at best. But even so, the, the things they did were some sort of unique, even if, even if they weren't actually, and actually unique and they were just good takes on other, a good compilation of things other people did, did before them. But they were good takes. Assassin's Creed can't say that. <laughs> huh. And the combat. So, so any Souls game does it better. I'll, I don't, like, I honestly find Lords of the Fallen more, more fun to fight in than Assassin's Creed. Right oh now. no. Because Lords of the Fallen, the stats are freaking, you're way too reliant on the stats. Unless you build like how they, they designed the game that you're not playing right because you, you'll just die. I legitimately had to freaking rebuild my whole character before the final boss fight because my build wasn't what the designers intended. And, and without, without the build they intended, you can't kill the freaking final boss. But. That game is that game is more lenient with its stats, <laughs> and the the traversal, freaking going on the horses, is shit when you're driving them and autopilot is there, <laughs> like huh. autopilot sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. If 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 you want to go to like a city or a settlement near a road, then it works. If if you don't want to go to a city or a settlement near near a road, then it doesn't work. And the ho- once again, the horse controls suck. The freaking uh, the level gating is bad and done badly. Because in the Witcher, <laughs> once again, I- I'm freaking. It- it's just gonna like one of these days. I'm just gonna say I like the Witcher. It- I think it's a really good game. It's my favorite. And th- then you'll know that I've gone crazy. But <laughs> yeah. But like in in the Witcher, there is some level gating, but it's mostly you don't mo- you mostly don't notice it because. There's they they try to blur the level gating with actual lore gating, 
So, like, I can't go to the city immediately because I don't have a pass. I can't get a pass because I'm low level, but it's not the, it's not the level that's required of me, it's the pass. I want to mention something here, actually. Yeah? So my sister's also a kind of big fan of Assassin's Creed, and I bought her uh, Origins for Christmas a year ago. Yeah? And she got pretty far in it and then totally gave up because she ignored the side missions and got the all the enemies got horribly overleveled. Is that not what you complained about happening in Origins as well? I complain about it in both games. It, it happens in both Origins and Odyssey. Like, I'd, I didn't ignore most of the side missions so, so for a while. Because, like, in the, in the initial starting area, I did the uh, side missions in Origins. And then I was like, well, you know, I, 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 I don't mind these. I'll do them when I, when I feel like it. But I mostly want to get through the story because I got the game, like, two days early before release. So I wanted to get through it so I can review it. I'm not joking. Yeah. <laughs> one, of, one, of, one of the few good, th- good things of pre-ordering th- things physically is, is that, that one thing. I actually sold my DS for Origins, by the way. Ooh. So, so when, when I said that Origins was alright, I mean it, because I, I sold something much more valuable. <laughs> Just to get it. <laughs> but yeah, Odyssey, like, Odyssey does... does ev- like, Odyssey, once again, takes the issues that were in Origins, doesn't fix them, just makes them more. Like, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't make more issues, just more of the same issues. And, like, well, like the Trevor's will just to go back to that in, in Odyssey. Like, do you have that? We have running. Running feels like S because I can't control my speed. Like, te- technically, yes, I control my speed with the stick, but that doesn't feel good because I'm either, wa- either walking way too slow or running way too slow. Yeah. <laughs> Like there's there's no jolt of speed like when when you used to go go into sprinting mode with the freaking with the older games, and people say that it's the same speed as the older games and you just don't feel it because it's a it's a larger map and that that's a fair argument but then it's it's on the game designers to make it feel the same speed. <laughs> just because some, something is true doesn't mean that it's it, it's not remediable. Yeah. Uh. And then also the climbing. They took out climbing altogether, and now it's just press a button and then press forward, and there you go. Which some people like, I don't, because the freaking... <laughs> because parkour puzzles were once upon a time a big part of, big, big part of the game's the series' design, and not only a parkour puzzle is not a thing anymore, parkour isn't. Like, it, vi- visually it's there, but it, it's not there. It, well, I definitely remember the uh, ancient Rome dungeons from Brotherhood, where there was definitely a lot of that. Yeah, they 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 kept the big the actual puzzle parkours mostly to the to the dungeons, and then in the towers you had some puzzles, or like in the in that one tower in Firenze in the second game. I remember that being a, a part of a puzzle because you had to come back after you've gotten the the jump while climbing to get up it. Yeah. But like I like I like those. It it wasn't too challenging. It it was probably a, a bit too easy overall. But like, you know, I I felt I felt it it was nice, and you, you had a lot of lot of control over the character. It was a bit janky. I won't say that it wasn't janky because it was very janky at times. I remember going through a wall a couple of times. But <laughs> overall, I felt like it was a better. Take on it than the new ga- newer games where in Assassin's in the, in three and four and Rogue, you just press run and then and climb and it like there's tears to it still, but it's it's not as well defined and you can control as much. And then in, in Unity and Syndicate, you had climb parkour up and down. It was getting a bit stupid and it was just more uh, quote unquote fluid animations, which were really fluid and didn't look that good. <laughs> And then we get to we get to where he where we are now, where it's literally a button and pressing forward, and no thought is required by either the player or the designer because the player doesn't have to think about where to climb because it, the designer didn't have to think about where to put the handholds. And they, I, I've even seen on a couple a couple of times on like forts in freaking Odyssey, where there's there's an obvious handhold. But because of where I where I started climbing climbing the freaking fort, the character goes around the handhold, but doesn't doesn't actually grab the handhold because it doesn't recognize it as a handhold. It's just a wall it can climb. 
<sighs> so yeah, there's just so many things bad with those games. Like not not bad, it's just painfully mediocre really. Like it's it, it's 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 like they they're they're trying to balance between being bad enough to be laugh laughable and thus fun, some somewhat fun. And they're balancing between that and actually being somewhat fun. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> and the Libris of the also just overall screwed up a lot recently. Four Cry Six leaked. <laughs> yep, I saw that. And also, Ubisoft had to freaking throw together, throw together a small E3 for themselves because they, they had a lot of bad people and still probably do have a lot of bad people in, in power. Whoop, whoops. Because, like, Ashraf, Ashraf quit because he, he cheated on his wife. That's his, that's his personal thing. That, that's whatever. And then, freaking, apparently... Some, like, I don't know who, but apparently they had to fire a couple of people for sexual harassment recently. <laughs> ha! Of course they did. Yeah. So, they're, they're trying to save face and all that, but, like, the biggest issue Ubisoft has overall as a company right now is that they stopped publishing third-party games, so, that, so they don't have those going for them. They only have their first-party games or whatever, their, their own IPs. But they didn't. They don't care about the IPs anymore enough to actually make them, make them try to be different and feel different. And it's it's damaging all of their IPs because back then we had like Prince of Persia, Splinter Cell, freaking Ghost Recon, and there were similarities between those three. Even Assassin's Creed when, once freaking Pop died, but. There were similarities between all of those series, but they weren't the same. There were design elements that were shared sometimes, but you like you know, freaking Ghost Recon wasn't just first person Assassin's Creed, and then Far Cry came, and then and and then uh, Revelations or Three came out. I forget. Splinter Cell died. Pop died. Ghost Recon is is a shambling corpse right now. <laughs> but Ghost Re Ghost Recon isn't. Yeah, Ghost Recon isn't. So, yeah, they, they just stopped giving a shit of, of once that some of their games got bigger. And that, that's, when, that's when we saw the freaking board of towers being in every game, and that's when people started disliking them. And I, I, now, yeah. I like that you're not calling them just towers, you're calling them board towers. That's how they were introduced to me, so... Like the idea, they are they all belong to Rodrigo. They're all Borgia towers. Yeah, I don't know. That that's just how they were introduced to me, and that's how I remember them. Like I, most people call them Ubisoft towers, and that's a good name. I just call them Borgia towers because I think it's funnier. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so like that, that's when that's when we got the Borgia towers in every game, and that that's when it started started to morph into like Far Cry stopped being a first person shooter. About an army guy in in a exotic place, and it started becoming a uh, freaking first person shooter with drugs and Assassin's Creed references. Splinter Cell, Splinter Cell stopped altogether. Ghost Recon, <laughs> Ghost Recon became a, became open world Splinter Cell because now it's not not first person. Freaking and, and also borrowed Assassin's Creed stuff from what I gather. It just go, goes on and on like that, and like, basically, if, if this goes on like this, either, well, either it won't go on like this for, for long, and people will just stop buying Ubisoft games, and either they go bankrupt or actually change something in their freaking philosophy, or we just get a, a freaking ultra Ubisoft game that is just all of their IPs in one. Yeah. And sometimes they try to do something interesting. Some of the smaller studios try to do something interesting, like freaking there was Eagle Flight recently. That, that was the most yeah. recent anyway. But there was also so freaking few and far in between that there's no, no, that it doesn't really, really do anything in the overall scheme of things. Huh. Alright, there you have the Assassin's Creed Valhalla Land. Was, was this 30 minutes as well? <laughs> Ah, uh, well, uh, at least, uh, uh, yeah, was it? Maybe. It might have been, I don't know. 
at, at least we can all rest knowing that I, I, I'm freaking over it, <laughs> over Valhalla enough that I, I won't be freaking bringing it up as much as I did with Odyssey. <laughs> all right. I, I'm in the I'm in the freaking acceptance part of part of the five stages of grief. <laughs> yeah. Uh so yeah. Was that the podcast? Sounds like a podcast to me. Did someone say bye? <laughs> <laughs>